We're having a very edgy week, apparently. Bones just did his video on villains, and I'm doing a video about monsters. And we got like a skull in the mail. So yeah, this week is edgy. How the heck do you design monsters? Well, they're very similar to how you would design characters. So like designing a character, you begin with your personality. However, with monsters, well, no, don't get me wrong. Monsters do have personalities, like depending on how you're writing them. But generally they begin as an idea, a personification of a fear or insecurity or issue. Um, they are usually the internal fear or anxiety or whatever that the main character is facing. And then they are the embodiment of that um, and bring it into the physical world and put the main character in danger. So that is usually where you begin with a monster. Um, so whatever that, that fear is, you need to base their design around that. Whereas with a character, you'd base it around, say, like, how they act or, um, you know, what are their likes and dislikes. A monster can definitely be a lot more of, like, a simplified concept uh, as opposed to a character, where a lot of the times the character has to be a lot more, like, real and um, feel like they could actually exist, where monsters... There's a lot more, like, suspension of disbelief, and they're very, like, they're a lot more conceptual than, you know, a character. But that isn't to say you can't design monsters that are characters or very complicated, like, personality-wise. That's all up to you. But on the base level, monsters are, they're a fear. Come to life. Um, so that's usually my starting point with monsters. Um, so for example, if you take, like, the magpie, who is the, the villainess of... Um, our comic, The Magpie. Uh, so she is the embodiment of nothingness. <laughs> At least that's what she claims. We based her around this idea of a hoard. You know, similar to how a magpie, like, hoards objects, she hoards, like, people and corpses and broken things. And she kind of lives in the spaces between all these, like, this collection of grotesque stuff. She's this, like, ever-looming presence that's always there in the shadows, collecting things and controlling things, and it's this fear of, like, something always watching you and these, these like, hands that are always there to control you. Like, <laughs> so, like, the way that I show that through her design is in the comic, all of her text appears on shadows. Um, it's always white on... Oh, no, never mind, not always, but it's usually, like, white text on black. We deliberately, like, have her her shadow and her claws um, warp and distort the panels to make her seem, like, bigger and more menacing. Similar to how she's, like, you know, controlling things and hiding in the shadows, she's always just this big, big sets of claws that just appear out of the shadows and they're huge and they can change scale and pick you up or claw you up. Uh, and she's also depicted as like a giant eye that is watching you from the shadows. Um, and we deliberately decided, well, we're never really going to show her entire form because she doesn't really have an entire form if she's, you know, the nothingness or lives in between spaces. She also does have a bit of a personality. She's a character as much as she is like, like a force of nature. She, she's like a sassy diva. Kind of. <laughs> um, on top of being this big scary monster. So we gave her very, like, scripty, frilly text <laughs> to make everything she say, she, to make everything she says sound, like, a little more pretentious. Because she's very pretentious. Uh, but yeah, so then, so again, Magpie started out as, like, a concept as well as a character, and we sort of, and we built her designs based on that. Um, because if you start with a concept that's inherently scary, you don't need to, it's a little easier to create scary things from it. <laughs> and what I mean by that is I tend to, there's certain, like, things that people consider creepy that they put on monsters that are kind of, like... I find them kind of boring and, like, base level creepy. Um, so things like, you know, like a big smile and, like, red eyes and, I don't know, like, long limbs or something. Like, <laughs> you know, you can think of it. Just think of, like, a bad creepy pasta. That's, like, all the horror shorthands of, like, this is a creepy monster. When it's like, is it really? I mean, like, sure, it can sometimes look, like, uncanny, but... It's very, like, 
it always seems just kind of uninspired to me. You know, if you look at any, say, like, Silent Hill monster, they're all based off, like, different fears of the different characters. Um, so, like, Pyramid Head is, like, the embodiment of the main guy. What's his name? Bones, what's the main guy of Silent Hill 2? James? Is that his name? Yeah, James Lundergan. James Lund- <laughs> That's a lie. Siri, who's the protagonist of Silent Hill 2? Here's what I found on the web for who is the protagonist of Silent Hill 2. Thanks, boo. James Sunderland. Oh my god, you're so close. <laughs> okay, let me rephrase that. For example, Pyramid Head is the embodiment of James's guilt in Silent Hill 2. Um, if you look at, at, like, any of the monsters, they're all an embodiment of, like, a fear. Like, a fear of pregnancy or a fear of like an abuser or something like they they're all rooted in something and they're very like if you look at them you can tell that's what they are even though like it's very distorted and like blown out of proportion into like this freaky monster so i think if you're looking to be creative with creating your monsters if you're worried about like maybe your design might look derivative or something like similar to how you'd start with a character instead of solely basing them off like um shorthands of different character designs you've seen you know, start with a personality, with a, with a monster, start with a concept, like the concept of a fear. And character design, you want to take that and like push it as far as you can. Monsters can be like super, super, super exaggerated and like, and admittedly that can be like a hard balance to walk between like uncanny and goofy looking. It's very easy to go, um, to create a monster design and like push it really far and then discover that it just looks kind of silly. Um, so it's also very important when you're designing your monster to think about, I think the more like tactile and kind of like based in reality you can make them the creepier they are because you get into that, um, that uncanny valley of like, you know, you see something that looks like almost like a human, but then not quite. And it's, it's creepy. So if you find, like, you're pushing it too far, you can always pull it back to more, like, reality, I guess, to make it creepier. <laughs> and the nice thing about monsters, too, is you can give them personalities. You can person- or not personify, but, like, humanize them and make them, like, really relatable and sweet while still looking creepy. Um, or cute. You can have cute monsters. You can have creepy monsters. You can have very, like, neutral monsters. There's so many possibilities. Um, so if, yeah, if you're ever looking for inspiration for monsters, it's always great to start with, like, what do they represent in the story? A good starting point can also be just grabbing something from reality, so, like, an animal and distorting that, you know? For example, if you're trying to make, like, fantasy creatures, instead of grabbing, like, your typical dragon as your base for your dragon... Why not go grab, like, a cool lizard, like a chameleon or something, and base a dragon off of that? It all- I guess it all depends on your intent. If you're making a scary monster, or just a cool monster, there's so many ways you can, like, go about it. Um, for me, with, uh, Pretty Mouth and the Magpie, because our comics are all very, um, they're all based in the same universe. Uh, Pretty Mouth and the Magpie, that is. Um, that's very, like, Lovecraftian-inspired, and all the- the major villains are elder gods, um, so we always start with a concept and then build out from there. Um, so for example, the magpie, like I said, is based off like, like a horde, and one of the villains of Pretty Mouth, Hal, he is based off, um, he's based off like the, the concept of like finding enjoyment in like physical pain. So he's, yeah, he's a real creepy dude. He's, he's one of the, the villains, but he's very based off like, um, body parts that have been like mangled together and stuff. And he's very like, that's what he looks like. <laughs> and then there's also uh, Monster Dad, who's also from Pretty Mouth. He is based off, so he's this big like pool of mouths and eyes and like goop that like consumes everything it touches. Um, and he's, he's based off that. He's based off like a monster that eats everything and just consumes it. And it, you, you know, you become a part of this big horrible mass of creepiness. Um, so yeah. Man, I hope I didn't make my character sound super lame, because I think I did. <laughs> Anyways, I hope that helps anyone who is working on monsters. 
Hopefully that helps you create some really unique designs and gives you a good starting point. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or if you'd like to request a video topic, please leave a comment down below. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more edgy videos about webcomics and writing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's all I got. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.